New at 10, valuable information is missing from a national DNA database, a major crime fighting tool in our country. And that omission could prevent crimes from being solved. WREG investigator Jessica Gertler tells us why some DNA samples were never collected despite it being required by law. A woman unlocking her southeast Memphis apartment felt a cold metal object pressed into her back. Terrell Jackson threatened to shoot as he followed her inside, put a blanket over her head and raped her. DNA evidence wasn't processed until 17 years later. In 2001, Thomas Maupin violently raped a woman in a North Memphis alley. But the DNA evidence wasn't sent to the lab until 2017. He went on to kill two more women in Millington. The DNA from both men was in a national database called the Combined DNA Index System, also known as CODIS. When the evidence was finally entered, it played a crucial role in their arrests. Yes, definitely. Donna Nelson is with the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. She says DNA evidence is submitted to their crime lab and then entered into CODIS so it can be searched against DNA left at other scenes. It can also be compared to DNA from people who were arrested or spent time behind bars for certain crimes. It can rule out suspects and quickly generate matches like it did with Jackson and Maupin. So the more samples you have in the database, the more crimes you can solve. Tennessee law requires those convicted of felonies and sex crime misdemeanors and those arrested for violent crimes to submit their DNA so it can be uploaded into CODIS. But WREG investigators found out the law hasn't been followed for years. CODIS is missing DNA samples from across the state, leaving crimes unsolved and criminals walking free. How did they get through without giving their DNA? Do we know? It happens if you don't have a process in place that you're monitoring and you're making sure that the samples are being collected, it can fall through the gaps. The TBI predicts statewide there are 76,000 samples missing, dating back to 1998. A discovery Nelson says Memphis police brought to their attention. In the fall of 2019, the Memphis Police Department went to a national conference and spoke to the sheriff's office from Cuyahoga County, Ohio. They found out how 15,000 offenders there somehow never gave their DNA. Once we returned, we, um, we briefed our command staff, uh, let them know that we would be looking into it. MPD's Sex Crimes Unit Major Michael Rosario assigned a team to take on the daunting task. So we requested felony conviction information from the courts in Shelby County. And we got a sample of about 30,000 individuals. As they started sifting through, they discovered missing DNA samples and a serious system failure. The way it worked, the Tennessee Department of Corrections swamped for DNA when the inmate began a sentence or started probation or parole. The Shelby County Sheriff's Office handled DNA swabbing for those arrested for violent or sexual crimes. But no one was collecting DNA for those who pleaded guilty or were convicted of low-level felony offenses and got credit for time they've already served in jail, meaning they didn't have to go to prison to complete their sentence. Whose job was this going to be? Shelby County District Attorney Amy Wyrick says she organized meetings with multiple agencies to answer that question. Going forward, the plan is in place. We implement it here February 1st. These are the buccal swabs that are used to collect the DNA. The TDOC volunteered to take on the role. They actually do it inside the courtroom. Joe Williams with the TDOC says their court specialist received training and have been handling those unique situations. We're still figuring out a few little items and but but so far it's working. It's working really well. Failure to collect DNA is a problem across the country. In August, Washington State's Attorney General announced they were missing DNA from hundreds of sex offenders. And officials with Cuyahoga County Sheriff's Office, who MPD first talked to, said they've collected 15% of the 15,000 missing samples. It generated 85 forensic hits from sexual assaults, burglaries, and even homicides. <laughs> There's no telling what MPD has recovered so far. We submitted an open records request asking for the list of offenders who owe DNA, but we're told that information doesn't exist. Rosario said the list isn't complete yet. It just seems like a lot of work, oh, it's time consuming, but, but what's 
what is going to be the end result? The end result will be increased leads in investigations, solving additional crimes, keeping um, hopefully repeat offenders off of the streets. Jessica Gertler, WRG News Channel 3. No one we talked to knew if offenders who owe DNA will actually be legally required to give a sample. What is clear, though, the Department of Justice granted the TBI $1 million to figure out who owes DNA in the state and create a strategy moving forward.